Of course, oh, I've been here on several occasions when um, Bishop when Bishop Greenaway was here in this um, area, and and Bishop Clark, right? And but one thing I must say. Seats have never been too empty in this convention, in District 5. And I think what that, that is really is the unity and the allegiance and the commitment that this district has, not only to the allegiance to the district supervisor, but is how you all work together to make this happen. And I really, really have always admired that unity, the strength. And I just want to say tonight that you have exemplified over the years that I've been here. I came to Delaware 2000, just at the turn of the century. And it has always been when um, I had come here before with um, and taught a class here before. And, this, the place was packed out. And tonight, as Friday night, where many people work and some coming home from work late and others, I cannot imagine what tomorrow I will see. But I just want to say, be strong, be courageous, be committed. Because I tell you, if the devil finds the weakest link, he's going to use it to separate and to just cause people to, to get, move away from each other. He does not like unity. All right? So don't give him an edge into your life, into the commitment. The Christian community needs to be one that the devil has to really see and run away from. And unless we become like glue together, work well together, when we stand in front of the American flag and we say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Why then, as Christians, we need to say, I pledge allegiance to our God Almighty, to be committed, to be strong, and to be courageous, and to be good, great workers for him. So tonight, I just want to tell you to be strong, and continue to be courageous leader, sir. And God bless you. Thank you for taking me up here. I know next time you will not call me because I took too much time. Thank you. God bless you. I love you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Bishop Robinson. Amen. Just your appearance here it make us feel good. Amen. Thank you for being a part of this assembly this afternoon. This time, Brother Clarence Maxwell in the house. Minister Maxwell. Okay, we have this part that um, many of your names is not on the program, but it's on the program in your pocket. So I'm going to ask uh, Minister Maxwell if he come tonight and he's going to do whatever the Lord lay on him to raise an offering. As I look into this program, what I've been doing this weekend, I almost wanted to be a, a woman a woman leading the charge for this weekend, but because my wife is not at the strength to do everything that she has to do, then... I said, as district supervisor, I guess I have to do my part. But I wanted our woman to preach. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not impossible. You know, there's changes. Sometimes we do make change, then changes does work. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, come on, Minister Maxwell, please. Thank you, Bishop. Just want to greet the convention, our district supervisor, our regional bishop, Bishop Woodrow, and wife, bishop and pastor, everyone in the convention. Just want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I was summoned here to do a job, and I think I get the easiest job to do. I'm here to collect five thousand dollars, and I said. <laughs> That's so easy. $5,000. And you know, I was sitting there and I was going through the program. And there is two other parts in the program that talk about giving. And the other two, he said, time to give.
But tonight, let's worship in giving. Worship in giving. So it's, it's not something you can escape from. You know, time to give. You, you don't have to give. But this one said worship. And I know everybody here loves worship. Amen? Amen? So we're going to worship the Lord in giving. And if you like me who love to worship, you will worship the Lord. The scripture said in Luke chapter 6 verse 38 that give and I will give given to you good measure. Press down. Not only press down but shaken. And running over. That, that's all the Lord will give back to you when you give to him. So tonight we're going to worship the Lord in giving. Can you stand with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you tonight. We thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for your children who you're going to minister to their heart to give and to worship you, Lord, in giving. I pray that you will touch everyone out, God. As we come tonight, Lord, we will begin this convention with a seed of faith, Lord, in worshiping you, God. Give our best giving. We pray that you will touch everyone, bless this offering, multiply it, shake it together, Lord. Let it run over. We give you all the glory. We thank you for what you're going to do right now in Jesus' name. Let the church say, before we sing a song, because it's not worship in singing, it's worship in giving. I would love, I'm going to be the example. I'm putting the first $100. Can I have a hush out here? I will love 19 more persons to just join me. 19 more. Quickly, quickly. 19 more persons just join me with $100. I put, Pastor Sky has said she's going to give, so I need 18 more persons. Quickly, quickly. We are talking about worship. Worshiping and giving. Come, if you don't want to come up here, just put your hand up and the usher will see you. Tell me when you reach the 20, please. I'm just encouraging you to give. It's worship in giving, not worship in singing. So if this is a part of worship. We all say it. We are giving God worship. Okay, you can look on the monitor. You see cash up. Uh, you know, you can do what you do there to give. But we need, 90, we need 20 persons to give me $100. I think we have reached 15 already. I'm saying we're supposed to reach the 20 already. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a praise in the house. We are worshiping the Lord and giving. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. We have credit card machine here too, so we have everything ready. So if you forget the twenty hundred dollars upstairs, we have credit card machine. We already reached twenty, Sister Bev. Come on, come on. We are worshiping the Lord in giving tonight. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's coming down. Come on, man. You're too quiet in worship. Come on, let us hear some noise in the house. Worship the Lord in giving. Bless the Lord. We're going to sing a song, but we're getting the, the $20 first. Then we will sing. We have four minutes to go, and I know we can do it. Come on, come with the 50s. Come, come with the 50s. Come with the 50s. Hallelujah. I know we're going to get over 5,000. Come on, we, I don't know I, if I'm... I know I have two people who agree with me. Bless the Lord.
Bless the Lord. It's coming. It's coming. We're almost there. All right, we can take the 50s now and all the 20s. Can we have a song, please? Hallelujah. We are going up. We're going up together. We're going up to conquer. In the name of the Lord. We are going up. We're going up together. We're going up to conquer. In the name of the Lord. Don't talk. Don't talk to me to me. I am a child of God. I got love and victory. Don't talk. Don't talk. Don't go. Don't talk to me to me. I am a child of God. I got love and victory. I'm a lover in the name of the Lord. 
I want to, before I overstep and forget, I want to honor um, our regular, I don't know why he just must move across the bridge, him and his son. He may not be a part of us. Minister Hersher Blackwood, it's good to have you. <laughs> and his dear wife in the midst. Your wife is here, yeah. Bless you. And I mean, this place in New York cheaper in Jersey than it is in New York. So let me know if you're looking for real estate. Praise the Lord. <laughs> It's so glad to have Sister Mary Cardi from District Number Four paying us a visit. Praise the Lord, Sister Mary. You said you was coming and you did show up. I asked Bishop Robinson if he said he called it, but he didn't. He didn't get an answer for me. But I just want to tell you thanks for just coming to be with us in District Number Five. And if they, I saw somebody that is a friend of Bishop Christian, I met him in, in the 50th celebration. I don't know your name, sir, but I saw you came in. God bless you. Stand up right there. Good to have you in the house. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us a part of our annual convention. Um, brethren, I want you to look around. And uh, I see some favorite cheer sitter in the house. But tomorrow, those chair sitters may have to stay in your room. Okay, so all those big $10,000 pocket book that's sitting in the seat, just bring your offering with you tomorrow and leave them in your room. Because I see what the Lord has been doing over the years. And I, tonight, what I see I am predicting an overflow tomorrow. Amen. And um, I almost get punched, but the person hold back the punch. And there, from now on, we do the program as long as I'm district supervisor. I would like you to put in the program our translator. Sister, Minister, Theorella Manjivar. Because she has been doing a tremendous job. And she asked me to find in another interpreter. I have one, but she's kind of laying low, nervous, don't want to step up to the place. She's even looking at me, but she, she has her glasses on. She's looking on this side of the glasses. But I want to thank you, Sister Fiorella, to be here tonight. So, Sister Preacher, I, they told me to make sure I told you that there's an interpreter in the house. See, she can't keep up with me. She only has to catch what she catch from me. But with you, you may have to slow it down a little bit. Praise the name of Jesus. So, this is a good time. The Lord has been good to us. I'm honored. I love what I see tonight. I thank you, God, for what he has been doing in District Number 5. And I want you to continue to be a great servant. I, 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 I got to get special thanks to the Ebenezer Church. Amen. Amen. We, we, we have been struggling for years to come together. But we, I believe we are together. In spite of the language difference, I don't, it, it doesn't bother me when I go to their church. They can sing. I love them songs that they sing. But the music is right. I get right within it. Amen. But I just want to give them special thanks for being here, especially on a Friday night. And you will hear from them on the program tomorrow. At this time, Sister Yvette, will you come at this time? Good evening again, District Number Five Convention. Uh, this is the biography for our guest speaker this weekend, Pastor Palmer R. Hutchinson, lead pastor. I'll read it as it is on a paper. 
Palma has been engaged in ministry for almost 30 years. Her ministry focused primarily on students and emerging leaders. She served as the International Youth Ministries Director for the Church of God of Prophecy for 10 years. Palma's passion for equipping next-gen leaders took her to Kentucky Church of God of Prophecy State Office, where she served as Emerging Leaders Director. She also served the local church in Elizabethtown, Kentucky, as youth pastor. While there, she developed, developed equipped leaders and launched the local church, Church's small group ministry. For the past four years, Palma served Roswell Street Church in Marietta, Georgia, as youth ministries director. And this one, one of the leaders in his community facing ministry. I'm sorry, this is hard to see in this lighting. Um, she facilitated a program called Whisper at one of the Marietta High Schools. The Whisper program is student-led. My role was to recruit, train, and, co and coach students to respond to the, the relational needs of their peers, thus removing isolation and aloneness. Palma currently serves as lead pastor of the Crown Heights Church in Brooklyn, New York. Palma's ministry had taken her to the nations, where she ministered to thousands of people of various race, language, and ethnicity. She's written articles, developed lessons, and contributed to various publications, including the Impact Student Bible and Impact Devotional. She has collaborated and partnered with parachurch organizations and church movements to encourage and equip the saints for the work of ministry. However, her greatest joy and privilege is sharing life with the students she pastored as well as mentoring and coaching next-gen and emerging leaders. The Great Commission, em empowered by the Great Commandment principle, is her go-to resource for discipling followers of Jesus and equipping emerging leaders for maximum impact in life and ministry. Its message is inspiring and life-transforming. Love God and love people. Make disciples who make disciples who make of others. It has significantly shaped Palmer's ministry and relationship. District number five, please give a big hot welcome to our guest speaker, Pastor Palmer Hutchinson. Now, if there's nobody in the house need to stand all the young people from the age 35 down all those used to go to youth are up right up because you know I'm one of them praise praise the name of Jesus you have never been youth conference over the years Come on, you have ever you been to your conference over the years? All right, so you know who we have, right? Amen. It's it's I, I want to tell you something to make you understand before I turn the mic over. I sent out a radar for a guest speaker. And the guest speaker tell me something about age. And turn me over to somebody else. I have not seen a word to this woman till she show up this morning and I say hello. My wife and her do all the communication. One thing I do not do, I do not speak to a preacher, especially when they have to come into my territory to preach. So whatever she said tonight, it's up to her and the Lord. Welcome, preacher. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bishop. Hello, everyone. It's a joy and a privilege to um, be with you. 
Um, I always laugh when uh, people refer to uh, youth ministry as if it was recent. <laughs> All the young people that were in youth ministry when I led now have children graduating from college and having children. <laughs> it always cracks me up. <laughs> um, I returned um, to New York after being away for 30 years, almost 30 years, and uh, that's what I encountered. Children that I left are grown now. Uh, that does something to your ego. But anyway, <laughs> I am so glad uh, to be with you tonight. And I do want to give greetings uh, to my friends, uh, Bishop Woodrow and Sister Pauline. And I, I felt compassion for Chris. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's true. The Lord allows me to experience the word before I preach the word. And so I was moved with compassion for Chris because he's a church kid. And I, I, I just whispered to him, as, as long as you live, you'll be drugged to church. That's, that's how it works. Story of my life. <laughs> thank God, right? Thank God. Uh, Bishop, thank you for um, giving me the opportunity and Sister Copeland. And I don't know if my um, regional bishop is watching or where he might be right now, but I do thank you, sir, for voluntolding me. <laughs> I was voluntold for this assignment. <laughs> and I do so with joy. And I do greet all of you that are here on a Friday night. Um, I'm going to do my best. Where's the clock? I don't need it. Well, I can't read it anyway because it says 2314. By the time I subtract the 12 and get to the real time, uh, we're all going to be in trouble. So <laughs> um, <laughs> put that in regular normal people. Eight, 846, how about that? Oh, it's counting down the time that I have. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Okay, so. <laughs> Y'all could have helped me. Just made me embarrass my whole self. Um, anyway, I am so glad to be here. Let's pray. God, um, what a wonderful opportunity it is to just be together in your house. Glory to God. Oh, when your people, people who love you and love one another, get together in the same room to sing songs, to give you worship, to offer our money, to celebrate, um, to hear your word. We know that you are in the midst of us. We worship you and we bless you. I confess, Lord, to you and to my brothers and sisters that I can do nothing without you. My words are empty. My words have no power. But your word's life. And your word will accomplish everything that you send it to do. And so we pray for that today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So tonight I, I, wanna, um, I want to lay a groundwork, if you would uh, just bear with me a little bit, for um, before we get into the theme of the, the, the convention. For the, the past few uh, months that I have been at the Crown Heights Church, we have been sort of tracking on the same idea of engaging the world with the love of Jesus. What it is to be moved with compassion for the lost, for the least of these, for those that are hungry, those that are without the Lord, those that are 
dying on their way to hell. And it led me to a, a self-assessment. Sometimes we have to do a self-assessment. Especially those of us who have been serving the Lord for a long time. Even those of us that have been involved in ministry for a long time. Every now and then, we have to step back a little bit and to see how churched we've become. Because we can become so churched that we forget that we are on mission with Jesus to complete his work, build his church, he's doing it, until the end comes. If you're like me, sometimes we can get so busy doing the work of church that we forget the work of people. We forget to feel, we forget to see, we forget to be moved the way Jesus is moved. So I want us to take some time tonight, just a a, a little time, to just do some assessment. And then we're going to talk about this idea of being ambassadors and being a new creation and all that that means. So we're going to look in the book of Hebrews. And it was written to a church that was getting old and was settling into the world and losing its wartime mentality. It was starting to drift through life without a focus, without vigilance, without energy. Huh? It, it, it was starting to grow weak. Their knees were becoming feeble. It was just easier for them to meander through life. Hmm? Just doing life, doing church. And we see this over and over in the book of Hebrews. For example, in Hebrews 2, 1 and 3, the writer says, We must pay much closer attention to that what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. And then he asks a question. How shall we escape if we neglect So great a salvation. So into the church has crept this disease of drifting and neglecting. People growing careless. Spiritually lazy. Negligent. We see it in church culture today, don't we see it? Don't we see it? Uh, uh, There's there's the, the gray area. Between holiness and righteousness and what is unholy and what is unrighteous is so blurred that we no longer know where we are. Where do we land? We see it. And we have a good reason. We have a good excuse. You you know what the excuse is? Oh, I'm only human. I'm not perfect. And God loves me. And he loves me anyway. And grace. And, and he knows I'm not perfect. And, and we, we, we have a good excuse. And that's all true, isn't it? God does love us. And there is grace. Sufficient grace. And he does forgive us. But what has happened, I believe, in the culture is that we have rested more on that than on the pursuit of righteousness and holiness. And we have leaned more into the I'm not perfect than pursuing perfection. And what all of that does, it begins to dull our conscience, dull our soul, dim our eyes. We no longer cry for the lost. We no longer mourn for those that are on their way to hell. We no longer weep in the altar for our lost children and grandchildren. Our hearts no longer break for those who are on their way to hell. We are not concerned as we once were. This is kind of tough for a opening of a convention. <laughs> Jesus is coming soon, y'all. Hmm. 
The writer of Hebrew had heard that some are no longer taking care. They have begun to have a kind of lazy sense of security. Listen to what he says in 5 and 12. Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. <laughs> the implication is that people who used to eat meat have reverted to milk. Hallelujah. The implications is that people who used to walk in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ have become milk drinkers. Hmm. They made a profession of faith. Yes, we are saved. Do we have any saints in the house? Do we have any saints here? Lift your hand up if you're a saint. If you know Jesus, their hands should be up. We don't use that word saints anymore because it implies something that we don't want it to imply. We don't use the word saints anymore because somebody's going to look at me and think, oh, she thinks she all that. She's so, I'm a saint. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am born again. I am set free by the power of the Spirit of God. I am washed in the blood. My sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. I am the child of God. And I'm not ashamed. Oh my goodness, they made a profession of faith and went into a passive kind of coasting mode. Just kind of coasting our way into heaven. Hmm? Think about it. How often do we think about heaven? How often do we preach about heaven? When we lay our heads on our pillows at night, do we say, come Lord Jesus, come? Do we wonder what heaven is going to be like? Are we longing for heaven or are we anchored to earth like we are here forever? Like we belong here. <laughs> We live like we belong here. We live like the Bible didn't say that we are foreigners. We're pilgrims. We don't belong here. We're passing through. And God has invited us to work with his son. That as we go, there are some others that we must take with us. I'm on my. They made a profession of faith. In our culture, everybody's a Christian. Have you seen that? Everybody's a Christian. <laughs> My friend sent me one of those clip things. What do, you, what do young people, these reels thing, you know? This guy don't have no idea who he is. But he has some kind of podcast. Everybody's got a podcast. Has a podcast, and he was talking about being a Christian. He, his podcast, he's actually a Christian one. He's, he's talking about Jesus, and, and his guests are talking about Jesus. And he, uh, his, his language is laced with profanity. And, 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 and he, he, he made this statement that, He's a follower of Jesus. He said, he, he's saved. Jesus, save him. And, and, and he's, he's, he's sleeping with his girlfriend, and they're not married. It's, it's, it's a religious podcast. He's talking to people about Jesus. <laughs> he's talking to people about being a follower of Jesus. And, and my friend sent it to me, and, 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 and she's like, Miss um, Pamela, what, what do you think about this? 
what do you want me to think about this? What exactly do you want me to think about this? Unfollow. That's what I think. Unfollow. Unfollow. Click the unfollow button. I don't know a whole lot of things. I know follow and unfollow. Unfollow. See, because the enemy of our souls, he's subtle, he's deceitful, he's lying, he whispers, he slithers. And here are some young people, young in faith, don't quite mature in faith. And they're watching this guy and he's got hundreds of thousands of followers, so he must be right. A profession of faith. But no pursuit of God. No pursuit of holiness. God means for every saint to be moving forward. Gaining strength and wisdom and holiness and courage and joy. From getters to givers. From milk drinking to eat meeting. From being taught to teaching. From feeble legs to strong And so the enemy has deceived us into thinking that all we need is a confession of faith. I, I believe in Jesus. So did the devil. I go to church and I pay tithes. Okay, good for you. I, I, I pray three times a day. All right. We've got the list and we're checking the box. And the enemy says, that's all you need. You're good. You're good. You're good. And all the time, Jesus is saying to us, open your eyes. Look around you. There's a harvest that is ripe. There are some people that are dying. There are some people that are hungry. There are some people that are lost. There are some people that are abandoned. There are some people that church has kicked them out. And we need to go get them and rescue them and show them the love of Jesus and who he really is. Oh, my gosh. One more thing. Hebrews 12 and 12 through 13. The writer says, strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble and make straight paths for your feet so that the limb which is lame may not be put out of joint but rather be healed. He's talking in images of our spiritual condition. These are the images that the writer is talking about. This is our spiritual condition. We've professed Christ. But we're weak hands and feeble knees. And crooked paths. I'm so sorry. I see you. I'm are you tracking? Okay, good. I'm trying to keep my eye on you, so I, but I get excited. Come on. <laughs> Amen. So then, that's the condition of the church that the writer painted. Profession of faith with weak hands, feeble knees, and crooked paths. And so this is the background, see, of Hebrews 12, verse 1. What does it say? You know this. You preach this. Let us lay aside every, <laughs> every encumbrance, every weight, and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Huh? This command does not come out of the blue, my friend. This command comes after a careful self-assessment of where we are. This come out of a careful look, a careful examination of the church. The writer says, hey, listen, we can't do what we need to do till we first do some things that we must do. Amen. 
fight the fight of faith. Fight the fight of faith. Tell the truth. We gave up fighting a long time ago. We, 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 we bought into the fact that churches feel good and churches give me a word and churches singing and, 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 and church. <laughs> I am so sorry. You, you can take the person out of the youth pastoring and they're old. I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. I don't know. This is the point of the whole book of Hebrews. Endure, persevere, run, fight, be alert, be strengthened, don't drift, don't neglect, don't be sluggish, don't take your eternity for granted. That's it summarized right there. Huh? Listen, this is what I see. This is what's going on. But I'm encouraging you. You got to fight. You got to persevere. You got to endure. You got to be alert. You got to be strengthened. Don't drift. Don't coast. Be flat-footed, man. And the rock that is Christ Jesus, let me tell you, perilous times are here. Mm -hmm. And then, show your faith. Then, live the faith. Hmm. Remember Hebrews 11? It wasn't by coasting. It wasn't coasting that got that list of names there. They did not coast through life. No, there were struggles and battles and failures and victory and falling down and getting up and battling and struggling and wrestling and getting a hold of God and not getting your hip <laughs> knock out a joint. Mm. And a search me, oh God, and know my heart, I pray. Wash me, God. <laughs> mm. Yes. And an abandonment. Oh, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to go. I don't know this city that you're telling me. I don't know if I can do what you're asking me to do, but here I go. That's my prayer every day. God made this decision that he wants me to pastor grown-ups. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you thinking? It's me. You forgot. <laughs> and every day of my life, Bishop, I'm like, God, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do. Show me what to do. My eyes are on you. Yes, Lord, I'll go. Yes, Lord, here I am. Yes, Lord, use me any way you can use me. But I don't know what I'm doing. But here I go. One of my issues with God, always been an issue I have with, you know you can have issues with God. I, I, don't, I don't like how he do some things. Can, can we say that in New Jersey? I, do, 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 you, do you know that, that sometimes I think I have some good plans? And if only God would just listen to me. I have some good ideas. <laughs> and, and my issue with God is that he never tells me what he's going to do. He never, I'm a list maker. Any list maker? I have to start my day with a list. If I don't, if I don't make a list every morning, 6 o'clock every morning, and then I prioritize my list. Right? And then at the end of the day, I have things checked off. I have things that's 
carried over. I have things that's in process. I have things that I've moved to another day, like next week. So I move it to the next week. On that's how that's how my brain process because of the ADHD DD. I have to do that. <laughs> There's not a rabbit trail that I have not been down. <laughs> Here I go. That's why I gotta. That's why I gotta type out all the notes. But listen, God has never once given me a list. He has never once in these 30 years of being all over the place given me a list of, oh, Pelma, I'm calling you. And number one, number two, and when you get over here, number three, all he says is, is it a yes or a no? And let me tell you something, I don't know about you, but I'm just going to confess about me. That yes is a struggle. That yes is a battle because I want details and I want to know what's going to happen. I want to know who's going to take care of me. I want to know, can I please have somebody to drive me? I'm sick and tired of driving myself. <laughs> he never listens to me. What's that about? I come up on an issue. There was a time in my life. Are, are, is this going out to the whole wide world? It is, isn't it? Huh. I hate the interweb. <laughs> I was a point in my life. There were some things, and it was hard. And the struggle, oh, the struggle. And it was difficult. It was difficult. It was difficult to survive. It was, it was difficult to live. Right? There was a point in my life when I had empty pantries. You, you, you look at me and you go, oh no, look, she's so cute. No, yes. There was a time in my life when I, I had to call m my parents and say, can you send money so I can get on the bus to go home? Because the church I went to preach didn't give me no offering. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. So I had the answer. And I told it to God. I worked it all out. And I said, God, listen, if, if you send me a husband with money, we, we can accomplish several things. Several things. I will never, ever have to drive myself again. I will never ever have to pick up my luggage off of that turnstile going around and around when I come home from a trip and I'm bone tired and I got to pick up that suitcase, put it in the car, drive myself home and I, mm. and then as an added bonus, Lord, if he has money, it's a good plan. It was a good plan. I'm a good person. I'm not hard on the eyes. So I say all of this to the Lord. This is prayer time, y'all. This is not just, this is me on my knees talking to the Lord. And you know what he does? He ignores me. Not a yay, not a nay, not even a little fuzzy Holy Ghost, nothing. <laughs> Get up. Get up and run. Get up, there's no coasting. Get up, there's a war to fight. Get up, there's a battle afoot. Hallelujah. Get up, there are people lost and going to hell. Get up and stop being selfish. Get up, do you not trust me? Get up, do you not know that I'm able to provide and to heal and to bless you and to give you all that you need to survive in this life? Get up! Get up. And we can't get up because of the encumbrances and the sin and the cares that weigh us down. Yes. So we lay it aside. 
This is revolutionary, my friend. The fight of faith, the race for the Christian life is not fought well or run well when we keep asking what's wrong with this or what's wrong with that or what's wrong with that person or what's wrong with this preacher or that leader. We look and we see and we have our own opinions and our own ideas and we ask the wrong questions. It is in the way of greater faith and greater love and greater purity and greater courage and greater humility and greater patience and greater self-control. Just, it's, that's, that's it. That's, that's where the question comes. That's where the question ought to be. That's where our focus should be on the me. I can't run unless I'm looking on the inside through the power of God's word and the all-seeing eye of the Holy Spirit asking me are you moving into greater purity is your patience Palmer mm. how are you coming with that patience how are you doing with that self control how are you doing with that unruly member that set ablaze fire how are you doing hmm The question is not only is it sin, but then we follow up is, is this helping me to run? Or is this holding me down? I remember when I was growing up in church, it was all about the music and the, uh, y'all, y'all, y'all are too young for this, but. When I was a teenager, you know, you, you know that the, the, the thing, you don't know this, but I'm this old, get over it. They used to tell us all this devil music, and, and if you play it backwards, backward masking, remember that? Every VLB service, <laughs> every, every VLB service, they're telling us about the music and the devil music and how Satan is in it. And if you play it backwards, and they would do it. And I'm listening. I can't hear it. <laughs> does it help me run? Or does it stunt my growth? Now, have you noticed how the pendulum has swung? way over to the other side. Now it doesn't matter. You can listen to anything, watch anything, go anywhere, do anything with anybody for as long as you want to. You just, it's just, whoa, way over there. Nothing is out of bounds. Nothing is off limits because God loves me. Everything that God loves he put a boundary around. Everything that God loves. That's what love does. That's what love does, right? Huh. One of the things that I appreciate more than anything in my life now is how I was raised. I didn't appreciate it then. I didn't want the boundaries. I snuck out. Listen. One time my cousin Joan and I snuck up. We went to a party. <laughs> and we run into my uncle. <laughs> it was a basement party, y'all. And, we, and he took us home. And ring the doorbell at 3 o'clock in the morning. It was horrible. I looked to cross every boundary. Huh? But that was love. That was a parent. 
saying, because I love you, I'm putting these boundaries to protect you, to guard you, because I know what's out there. I know what's over that boundary line. And God does the same thing. He gives us his word, and he says, these are the boundaries. Oh, stay in it and live. Breach the boundaries and you're at the, uh, it's the enemy's territory. He will eat you up. Oh Lord Jesus. What happened to the thing? It went away. So, so I want to encourage us tonight. I, I know. I thought I thought long about this. I really did. I, uh, God has not spoken His commands for nothing. Ah, uh, when we think that we can't change, we—that's mean. It's, 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 it's an assault on God. When we think that hindrances can't be removed, sins can't be laid aside, self-control can't be mastered. Uh, but God has not spoken his command for nothing. This entire book... <laughs> Is written to undergird what God has given us to practically do. And then he backs it up. He says, it is doable. It is possible. You know how I know it's possible? Because there's a great cloud of witnesses. Dead and alive. <laughs> that surrounds us. That give witness and testimony that it is doable. It is attainable. Since we have, since we, we're not, we're not living in a vacuum. We're, we're not running alone. We're not running aimlessly. God in his gracious power and love every now and then just hold up one of the witnesses it's like last Sunday in our church I had a bunch of parents come whose children were lost and I was impressed of the Lord to pray for lost children that's a burden of my heart that's a passion of my heart and I said to these moms and dads one of them, up to seven kids, had seven children that were lost, not serving Jesus. And I asked them, how many, how many, how many, how many? And all these moms and dads, broken heart. And I said this one thing to them. Look at me. Don't, don't just look at me. Look at me. Look at me. 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 And if God can save me, God can save your children. And I'm saying that to you without context. If you know my story, if you knew what happened to me when I crossed that boundary and the devil was waiting with mouth wide open to devour my life, if you knew... When I say to you, if God can save me, he can save your children. So God is gracious to us. And every now and then when our knees are feeble and our hands are weak and our path becomes crooked, God holds up a witness even if they're dead or yet alive, God holds up a witness and say, look, look what I've done. I can still do it. I can do it again. I can do it again. I will do it again. And God says, you can make it. You can live holy. You can live righteous. You can serve God. You can fulfill your mission. You can walk in your calling. You can Fight the devil and win. 
<laughs> and I got witnesses. I got witnesses. Abel, Enoch, now Abraham, Sarah, Moses, and all those who suffered and died, of whom the Bible says the world was not worthy. Mm. They're witnesses. I want you right now, right this minute, to bring someone to your mind that you know have impacted your life. Walk as an example before you. Walk as a living example in your life. Bring that person to your mind. He's there. She's there. Lift up your hand and say, God, I've got a witness. Hey, I've got a witness that God is able to do what he's asking us to do, that he's able to keep us, that he's able to use us, that he's able to fill us and send us, and we can have the power of God's spirit to do the impossible and walk in the miraculous. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's another motivation. Listen, history is waiting for you. Hebrews 39, 40 says, And all these, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised, because God had provided something better for us, so that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. And this is followed by 12, 1, that says, Therefore run. History is waiting for you. We all come to the fullness of our inheritance together. <laughs> huh? Somebody, somebody in your world, somebody in the traffic patterns of your life, somebody in the path of ministry, somebody in your home, somebody in your family, somebody around you is waiting for that witness. Somebody around you, some teenager around you, they don't care about how many Bible verses you can quote. They care to see how you experience it and live it. They don't care how many times you go to church in the week. They don't care how preaching you can preach. They don't care how good you sing. They want to know that what you're telling them, you're experiencing and you're living and you're living it in authenticity. Yes, it's hard. Whew. All right. I ain't going to make it. Too bad. And then finally, it is Jesus who creates and perfects our faith. We look to him. He creates. He's the author. He creates our faith. And he perfects our faith. <laughs> when we look at our own resources, it sounds something like this. I've tried before and it didn't work. I tried praying. <laughs> I tried reading the Bible. Have you tried reading the Bible lately? I tried doing all the church things. Have you ever, every single time that we do this thing, we, we right now our family, we're, we're reading uh, through the Bible, and uh, I skip over Leviticus. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. I, I, and then not just Leviticus, there are some other parts that I just kind of like, okay. And then I go on to the good part. Do you want me to lie to you? I'm not going to lie to you. It's the truth. It's the truth. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you want to know what my prayer life sounds like sometimes? Do you want to know it? I'm going on about my day and it's like, oh, God. I told sister so-and-so that I was going to pray for her and I forgot. God bless her. God help her today. Uh, I'm sorry, God. I forgot. I, 
not you. I, I'm just telling you about me. I, I, you've got it down. I know. That's, that's why this whole pastor thing is freaking me out, Bishop. Because aren't you supposed to have these things? Bishop, aren't you supposed to have these things down pat? Listen, that's not the point. The point is not I've tried and it didn't work. The point is that it's Jesus who started it. He's the author of it. And he will perfect it. He will complete it. And when we're authentic and honest before him, he helps us in our weakness. we will experience the joy of triumph at the end. The writer wants us to be motivated to endure, to run, to be patient, run with Jesus, run with Jesus. So he says, fixing our eyes on Jesus. We fix our eyes on Jesus, who for the joy set before him, endured the cross. Here's what I have learned, my friends. When I take on Jesus' cross, he's already endured the cross. Is that what he says? Endured the cross. That's a fact. What if I live in that fact? What if I experience that fact every day? When I'm weak, need, huh? when my hands are feeble, when my path become crooked, what if I begin to reflect on the fact that Jesus endured the cross? He did. And then the reward of seeing Jesus. The reward of seeing Jesus is the greatest incentive of all. That's the greatest incentive of all, to run. It's the greatest incentive to get up. It's the greatest incentive, my friends, to do these very difficult self-assessments. Hmm. Somewhere, uh, Blackwood Child, give me some... Uh, it's time to quit music, because if I don't hear that, I'll just keep going. And especially since they're telling me the real time now. That's just rude. <laughs> Do you see this? Now they're telling me the real time. It's 9.32 p.m. You've run out of time, girl. Give me some quitting music, will you? I want to I, I want to call us tonight. I, I don't I don't know how to do this altar call, and Bishop, you will help me, and the elders, you will help me. I don't know how to do this because it's difficult to give an altar call to save people. Uh, it's difficult because, first of all, we 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 have a tendency to watch one another. And then when we watch one another, we tell one another's story. Why is she going up there? Is her path crooked? Her got a crooked path. <laughs> but that's what I want to do tonight. If you would allow me and the Holy Spirit would help us. See, this living reconciled with compassion has some prerequisites. We'll get to that. But there are some prerequisites. We have to do some serious assessment. We have to allow the Holy Spirit, no matter who we are, how young or old we are, what position we hold, how long we've been saved, all of us, all of us, somewhere, sometime in our lives, we get weak. 
we get weak. Our hands get feeble. And even our paths sometimes get crooked. Crooked thoughts. Crooked imaginations. Anger that lingers. Malice that has taken hold. deep hurt that's turned into something else that's turned into strife and anger and pain things that we have not confessed to God let alone confess to one another and I feel so deeply tonight so strong so I'm so convinced that Jesus is coming soon. I know we've, we've been saying that a while. Remember my dad, my dad would get up to preach and we, as kids, we would make fun of him because no matter what he's preaching about, somewhere in that message, he's going to say, this world is not my home. I'm just a past. And as kids, we laugh at him, you know, we'd like go home and tease him. What did that have to do with the message, Papa? But he had his eyes fixed on heaven. I would dare to say that some of us in this room tonight, our eyes are fixed more on surviving, just making it, paying the bills, dealing with bad kids, dealing with life, work, stuff. Our eyes are more fixed on life than it is on life to come. Our eyes are more fixed on one another than it is on Jesus. Yeah. I would dare to say, please, Lord, help me. I would dare to say tonight, that because of the way that we have been raised in church, I grew up in this church. We hide our sin. We cover it up because somebody's going to talk about us and somebody's going to look at us and somebody's going to say, I thought you were. I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. Jesus tells us that if we sin, we confess, He forgives. Jesus tells us that we confess faults to one another. He tells us to do that. And our own pride, our own ego, our own shame, our own guilt keeps sin hidden. And I want you to know tonight that unconfessed sin is unforgiving sin. If we have sin that's unconfessed. I have taken up the practice now because, you know, I'm a pastor. <laughs> Everybody who knows me laugh when I say that because they know me. Y'all know me. <laughs> I, have, I have begun to practice. I did it before, but I'm doing it more now. Um, somewhere in my devotion, my prayer, I'm going to ask the Lord to search me. Sometimes we don't know our own hearts. We don't know our own mind. We don't know our own. We, we don't know what God sees. Us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And so I say, God, search me. Show me. Show me. Is there pride in my heart? Hmm. So I want to call us tonight. Would you bow your heads? I'm going to pray. And I'm just going to trust the Holy Spirit to nudge your heart. And if you would say... Yeah, I, I've, I've been coasting. I haven't been running. I've been kind of strolling. If you would say tonight, you know, there are some things that I need the Lord to handle for me. If you would say tonight, my hands are weak. My knees are feeble. If you would say that there are some crooked ways. And I, I, I would... I would trust you to obey the Holy Spirit and to let's pray together. Father, you who know 
knows all things and sees all things. And while eyes are closed, if you want to make your way to the front, you can do that right now. Father, you know us. You know us deeply. You love us. You care for us. We're not on this planet without purpose, without reason. We're not in this room by accident. You brought us here. You moved our hearts to come here, every one of us. And you brought us here for a purpose. God, I pray in Jesus' name that your word would now accomplish in us that which you sent it to do. And Lord, if you would give us the courage and if you would give us the heart to just surrender to you and come to you and confess what needs to be confessed and to open our hearts and say, yes, God, use me today. Use me. Use my life. Use me in my church. Use me in my home. Use me in my community. Use me any way, God, that you see fit to use me. I'm yours. I say yes to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come and let's pray together, if you will. Just come on to the altar. It's open for you. Or you can kneel where you are. I don't care. Or you can stand where you are. I don't care. But I would call you right now to just respond to the Lord. 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 Respond to Jesus tonight. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Respond to Jesus. Say yes to him. Respond to Jesus. That doesn't make you unsaved. You're still a saint. You're just saying more holiness, more patience, more self-control, more grace, more of you, more of you. God, I want more of you. God, I'm not satisfied. I don't want to coast. I don't, I don't want to coast. I want to run. God, I want to run. I want to run. I don't want to be bogged down to earth. I don't want to be anchored to earth. I want to be buoyed up by your spirit, God. I don't want to live this wishy-washy life. I want to stand holy before you, God. God, I want you to wash me tonight. I want you to cleanse me tonight. Cleanse my life, my heart, my soul, my mind. Oh, God, I don't want to straddle the fence anymore. I don't want to be over here in the world and over here in the church. I want to come fully surrendered to you tonight. God, we praise you and we bless you.
know for someone in this room, God's been dealing with your life. God is calling you. He's been working with you. He's calling you. You have been experiencing God's presence. He wants you. He's calling you. You don't know for what, and you're hesitating, and you're you're wondering, what do you want, God? And, and, and you're not fully, you're not totally surrendering or totally giving in because you don't know what. God is just waiting for your yes. If that's you, would you just raise your hand right where you are? If that's you, you know that God is calling you. God is, God is moving in you in a different way. God is moving in you in a special way, and you know it. You know it. If that's you, the elders are here, and they're going to pray over you. I saw a bottle of oil. It wouldn't be church without oil. They're going to anoint you with oil, and it's here, Bishop. It's right here. Who's that? Come quick. Come quick. Don't hesitate. Step up to the front quickly from wherever you are. Step up to the front. Come on. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Elders, Bishop, come, 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 come. Right here. Come. Who else? Come. Come. Hallelujah, Jesus. Who else? Come on. Come quick. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh. Listen. Listen to me. This is the greatest moment in history to be called by God. This world getting ready to experience God through you in a way that they've never seen God. You remember the book of Acts? Do you know the book of Acts? Do you remember all the things that happened in the book of Acts? That's where we're headed before Jesus comes. And Jesus is calling you to work with him. It's not your work. He's calling you. He says, come, I'm on mission. And I want you to come, you come, come join in my mission. Come on up. I want you to come join me in my mission to turn the world upside down. That's the call. To join Jesus in his mission to turn the world upside down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Surrender. Come on, hold up your hand. Surrender. Say yes, 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 yes. God, I don't know what it is. But you do, you are the author, you are the perfecter. You start it, you will finish it. You start it, you will finish it. Perfect it in me, here I am, here I am. Here I am, is that you? Is that you? Okay. I don't wanna miss anybody. If that's you, come on up here so we can see you. Thank you, Jesus, I made my choice.
whatever the Lord is saying tonight. Amen. Don't worry about the eyes that will surround us. But listen to the voice of the Lord. Make your decision. Make your choice. And take it all away with the Lord. Amen. We listen to a powerful amen, word. Amen. Word that come to help us to search ourselves. To examine ourselves. Hallelujah. It's nice sometimes that we can run around and receive the power and the glory of the Lord but sometimes we need to sit amen and just take in what the Lord is saying to us amen make that choice find yourself in the word whatever you need is in the word God got it he sent it to us he lent it to us It's a great start as we go forth for the rest of this weekend. Amen. And the Lord tell you to meet with somebody, talk with somebody, confess to somebody. Amen. Whatever the Lord is saying to you. Amen. Listen to his voice. You know, I heard the preacher said it's hard. Amen. To bring folks to Christ. It was on Sunday morning that I called an altar call, and I know within myself, I didn't say a spirit, I know myself, that was folks were sitting in the midst there that I believe in my spirit, I believe in my heart, it was not saved. But I was not God, I couldn't go ahead and tell him, You're not saved. Tonight, this other call is for those of us who know Jesus is speaking to us. Amen. Let that man tell you you need Jesus. You must know for yourself if you need Jesus. Because when we try to push Jesus, and you're going to say the pastor tried to push, but you got to find Jesus for yourself. Amen. One thing I learned over the years of Sister Palmer ministry. I remember she ministered to us. I don't remember if it was in a youth, a youth service or it was a regular service. But I remember she said she went to the island to preach. And as she got up to preach, somebody starts speaking in tongues. And the reason why the person was speaking in tongues, it was one of those church that wear hat and she was never covered with a hat and I remember she said after she finished preaching the word she went to the lady and asked what was that was all about it's just something we have to be sanctioned to the Holy Spirit and if it's real spirit of his normal human spirit because you know you see for yourself and you don't believe in it we have to understand that God speaks in mysterious ways. And when he speaks, we must listen to his voice. Pastor Hutchison, I want to tell you, thank you. When you get the call, you didn't say no. Amen. And we didn't talk, but somehow God allowed you to speak to us tonight. And don't take my part. Don't take my part. Take yours. Because a lot of us lose out on God by knowing, see my attitude and see that man is not right. Allow me to fix my part. But when you fix yours, come with me somebody. I want us to focus on this theme this week. For God is about to do something miraculously as we continue. I, I want to let you know that there is, amen, sometimes we need 
a little rest. Some of you been up all day, go to work and everything, you come back. So you need a little rest, right? It's a good time to get some sleep. And be back at 9 a.m. in the morning. So we're going to do a little bit of house cleaning before. I just want to do a little house cleaning as for tomorrow going forward. Right after we step out of here, the district choir will be having immediate rehearsal. Those of you who want to sing in the district choir on Sunday morning, you're asked to stay here. The men, you're asked to meet in Salon E. If you don't know where Salon E is, it's right outside of the restaurant. So that's Salon E. Make a right at the counter and you will be in Salon E for rehearsal. Okay, all right, so that's still on E4. Now, um, as you know, we used to holiday in. We don't used to holiday in. We used to Radisson settings and everything else. We are a holiday in now. So I don't know if it's tomorrow morning or tomorrow, whenever, but there's going to be a Spanish group, possibility, eating with us in the restaurant. So what I'm asking our people to do when you go into the restaurant um, to sit, try to group. Sit with somebody who you don't know. Don't go sit with everybody you know. Sit with somebody. So if you see an empty space and you don't know the person, have a relationship. Is that Okay. We, we want everybody to have common courtesy and enjoy this weekend. So uh, all the pastors that are here, the bishop pastors that are here, um, Sister Thompson asks you to see her before you go through the door. Um, okay, those are any other announcement? Um, those are the announcements for tonight. I want everyone to remember that um, Brother Steve is on wheels, but he will still take information from you, and he disperse them in any way that he have to disperse them. For going forward, you see a QR code on the program and it's on the monitor. Um, if you have to do donation, that QR code will take you right into the donation. If you want to use a credit card, we have a Clover machine over there on the register desk. So you can also use your um, credit card. Just remember, I, um, there's a 15, how much is it, Grace? What do they charge? Well, if you put $3, there's an extra $3. So if it's $10 to swap, it's going to be $13, right? Just want to make sure you know that that is coming out of your um, credit card uh, machine. So we want you to go and have a uh, good night of rest and 8.30 tomorrow all the prayer warriors ask to meet in Salon A. As you come out the elevator, that's Salon A immediately in front of the elevator where Sister Hunter will meet you there Amen. to bring you into the beginning of our morning service. Is there anyone here that would like to make an announcement for any reason? All right. Um, my team, you know, have an early breakfast, so you have an early showing up time. Don't let me have a come and start. You know the deal, right? Thank you all. God bless you. God bless everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. We will see you in the morning. God bless you.